Welcome to the next chapter 5 and episode 5.1 of our video course Parallel Programming and Optimization with Intel Xeon FICO Processors. In this episode, we will talk about optimization roadmap, steps you need to take to get the maximum performance out of your application. Performance optimization of computing applications has two general challenges. The first one is to find a numerical method that performs the required computation in the shortest amount of time. The second challenge is to express this algorithm as a fast computer program that utilizes the computational hardware efficiently. Often, those two tasks are in conflicts. Faster algorithms may parallelize poorly, while slower algorithms can be easier to program. In this course, we do not discuss numerical methods. We focus on second aspect of optimization, efficient parallel programming. So, what is required to efficiently program for Intel parallel architectures? Both Intel Xeon processors and Intel Xeon FICO processors are parallel vector processors. Optimization areas for them are qualitatively the same – vectorization, thread parallelism, and memory traffic control. However, those requirements are quantitatively more strict for Intel Xeon FICO processors. On the mic architecture, the code must be able to utilize wider vectors, support a greater number of threads, and the penalty for non-local memory access is greater. In this course, we offer a systematic approach that can help you to ensure that your code expresses the workload in a way that works well on Intel Xeon FICO processors. In this approach, we classify optimization methods and techniques into five categories. Scalar or general optimization, vectorization, threading, memory access, and communication. To achieve good performance, you must make sure that you check or improve each of those areas. In practice, some programming techniques improve performance in two or more of those areas at the same time. Let's discuss the details a little bit. 1. Scalar optimization. Some applications can be improved by consistently employing single precision floating point arithmetics instead of double or mixed precision, removing unnecessary type conversions, eliminating common sub-expressions, strength reduction, using transcendental functions supported by hardware, and choosing a compromise between precision and speed. 2. Vectorization. Performance-critical loops in your application must be vectorized. That is, the compiler report should indicate that automatic vectorization of loops has succeeded. In addition, you may use data structures that enable you in stride memory access pattern, enforce proper data alignment, and inform the compiler of opportunities for choosing the optimal vectorization code path. Number 3. Threading. Efficient applications for Intel Xeon FICO processors must be able to use up to 240 threads and do it efficiently, with good load balance and concurrently, and without much thread contention due to excessive synchronization or false sharing. Number 4. Memory access. Your application must be compute-bound or memory bandwidth-bound in order to do well on a Xeon Phi. That means that the locality of data access in space and time must be enforced. To do that, techniques such as loop fusion, loop tiling, and cache oblivious recursion can be used. Additionally, the data access pattern must be simple. If complex memory access is an inherent property of the algorithm, it may be possible to restructure data to pack memory accesses more compactly. Number 5. Communication. If an application works in the offload mode or uses more than one coprocessor or more than one compute node, you must control the efficiency of data movement between the host system or systems and coprocessors. It may be possible to reduce communication overhead by overlapping communication with computation, optimizing data marshalling policies, and relying on high-performance communication fabrics. In the next episode, we'll begin the discussion of optimization with the first topic, scalar tuning. Remember that all code discussed in this course is available as hands-on labs in our book. Thank you for watching, and I encourage you to ask your questions in the comment section below the video. And once again, I hope to see you in the next episode.